Reading with your kids. Hola, Niha, Kunichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Muni Muni Wanji, Namaste, Jambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted and so very grateful that you're joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Amazon Music, Spotify, wherever you find your podcasts. Our guest today is Christine Isley Farmer. She is here to celebrate Finding My Yip. Before we invite Christine into the studio, we want you to know that we have a brand new Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read, An Extra Dose of Love, written by Muriel Fitzpatrick. This is a fun Christmas story that gives families a peek behind the scenes at Santa's workshop. Santa is on his yearly journey to deliver toys to kids all around the world. He discovers that one toy did not make it into his sleigh. A call goes out to the elves back at the shop to begin a frantic search for the toy. By cooperating and using their problem-solving skills, the elves are able to save the day. The story reminds kids that mistakes and accidents can happen. And when they do, it's important to take responsibility to make things right. The story also celebrates teamwork. Families will enjoy the brightly colored illustrations that update the traditional images of Santa's workshop with all the latest tech. An Extra Dose of Love by Muriel Fitzpatrick. It's our latest Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read. Join us right now for one of my favorite places in the world, the wonderful state of Tennessee. She is the author of a beautiful picture book called Finding My Yip. Please welcome to the show, Christine Isley Farmer. Christine, how are you? I'm fine. How are you today? I'm wonderful. I'm really looking forward to getting to know, um, getting to know all about your book. Tell us about Finding Your My Yip, please. Finding My Yip is the first book in a chapter book series called Boomer's Tales. Uh, and it's geared for six to eight or nine year olds. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a, it's not a picture book, but there are pictures in it. There are really nice illustrations that were done by my illustrator Taylor Bills. So um, I'll tell you a little bit about the book. Um, the book has several protagonists. The first one is a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel puppy, and his name becomes Boomer later in the book. Uh, a nine-year-old uh, little girl named Chloe who has, a di- has difficulty stuttering, and she lives with her grandmother, uh, Nana Weather. She calls her n- Nana. Mm-hmm. The, uh, she comes to live with Nana Weathers because she's lost her family in a wreck, in a traffic af- accident. Mm-hmm. So she has developed her stutter uh, primarily through a traumatic experience. She has one, one wonderful desire, and that is to be able to sing like her Nana, who is a musician and a singer and a pianist. The child, Chloe, does play the piano, but she really wants to be able to sing. And as you know, some singers have had trouble stuttering, and they worked on it so they can now, they can sing without stuttering, but they still stutter when they speak in public. Mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, this nine-year-old is fighting with that problem or dealing with that problem, and the puppy uh, Nana Weathers ends up taking care of a litter of puppies and a mama for a friend of hers who's gone on an extensive trip. And one of the puppies has, has, is unable to yip. Mm-hmm. He can't yip like his sisters. So he's in search of finding his yip, hence the title of the book, Finding My Yip. But there's a, there's a larger meaning for the book too, because Finding My Yip is also Chloe's Mm-hmm. adventure as well or journey as well she's looking to find her yip too yeah it's interesting uh, you know we haven't talked a lot about um 
speech impediments and stuttering here on the podcast, other than the fact that I've uh, mentioned that that I grew up with uh, a speech impediment, had a very difficult time uh, with stuttering when I was young. Uh, it still rears its head every once in a while. I often joke here on the show, my kids kind of figured out that I had a hard time with particular letters uh, when I was tired, and F was one of those letters. So one of their favorite books to ask me to read was Fox and Socks. And I, I think they did it intentionally because there's so many, <laughs> so many F's in that, so many F's in that book. I was ready to scream F. But, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's fascinating. I, I want to delve into this a, a little bit more. I wasn't aware that a speech impediment can be caused by, uh, trauma. Uh, I'm, I was kind of surprised to hear that. Mm hmm. I've done some research on it, and trauma can, I mean, it, there may have been, a, a, in my book, I don't talk about it in the book, but I think that she had already a problem speaking mm-hmm. uh, with, uh, with uh, you know, uh, stuttering. However, with the trauma of losing her parents, moving to a new town, living with her grandmother, trying to make new friends at school, it's intensified. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that certainly does make sense. Yeah. A- another thing you brought up, which is, which I think a lot of people find fascinating is that there are, you know, we talk about, we, we, we think our brain, we, use, we know that our brain controls our speech. That's what we used to, but we think it's all just this one thing. And we don't understand that there are different parts of our brain that control different actions. And singing and speaking are controlled by two different parts of your brain. And um, my wife, uh, we've had an opportunity, my daughter and I have had an opportunity to um, spend some time uh, working with this amazing Christian singer, Jason Gray. And uh, had dinner with him, and had just such a uh, had some very wonderful experience. He was very kind to my daughter as she was getting into the music industry uh, as a teenager, and he has a beautiful, beautiful singing voice. And one day, when when we were in the car listening to his music, I mentioned to my wife that he's a really difficult time getting out a sentence. He has an incredibly uh, tough stuttering issue. And she was amazed. She says, no, that's not possible. And then we heard an interview and he, you know, it it was really difficult to follow it because he did stutter so much. So I think that's something that's really surprising to folks is that, yeah, you can sing like an angel, but and then finish singing and then have a hard time speaking. Exactly. Well, you know, you asked me about where I come from, and I live in Murfreesboro, which is outside of Nashville. Mm-hmm. But Mel Tillis, a lot of uh, people uh, may not know that he he has a stutter, or he had a stutter, mm-hmm. and he's been a, uh, a successful singer. Also, Carly Simon. Ah, was not aware of that. So, yes, Carly Simon. I looked up a lot to see how what singers had dealt with stutters, and those two came up. What was the inspiration for you to create a, a, a book series featuring a character with a, a, a stutter and a speech impediment? Well, I'm a singer. Mm-hmm. My background is being a professional singer and a, a, a voice teacher at a university. Um, I think I became interested in it because I myself, as you notice when I'm speaking with you, I stammer a little mm-hmm. bit. And uh, I think that I have a little bit of that. It's like uh, what happens with stammering and stuttering is that your mind moves faster than your speech organs. <laughs> mm-hmm. And singing is different because, different because what you talked about is that the um, there's a different what singing hits is in, it it's comes from a different part of the brain. Mm-hmm. And also, you phonate differently when you sing than when you, because you're forming vowels and still consonants, but you're phonating different if you also have music to sing too. So I think that um, my feeling of my own stammering once in a while was an incentive for me to write this book because I thought of a dog who can't yip. Mm -hmm. There's not a, a breed around that doesn't yip except the Basenji. And I, so, have, I have no idea what a Basenji is. Sounds like a character from Star Wars. 
I know, it, it does. <laughs> but it is a, a breed that it really yowls rather than uh. it does yip or, or make, it makes a sound, mm-hmm. but it's called a yipless dog. Mm-hmm. So, um, I thought, how unique, why not pair a child with a dog who has, who both have a difficulty yipping? And of course, dogs are my favorite type of animal. And uh, I had to have a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel because uh, I've had three of them, and I just adore the breed. Mm, neat, neat, neat. We have a dog. Augie the doggy is my security dog here in the studio. He's He, he keeps himself kind of stealth, hidden, hidden away. Um, but he came to us from a shelter. We rescued him from a shelter, and he was with us for about three months and was absolutely silent. We were amazed. He no noise at all, no vocalizations at all. And then one night, as we're as my daughter and I were sitting watching TV, for seemingly no reason at all, he just started howling. He's a beagle, and he just started howling. <laughs> and it was the funniest thing. I was rolling on the floor laughing, and the more I laughed, the more the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was he finally felt safe enough um, to let us know that he could he could howl. Um, That's funny. Well, I had to teach my second cavalier how to bark. Really? Uh, he, I mean, he made noise, mm-hmm. but he would not bark. And I can remember trying to coach him to to uh, bark with treats. Ah. Get him to bark for a treat. And now do you need to use treats to get him to stop barking? Because that's the problem we're having well, with Augie. <laughs> he's, not the, he's not the one I have now. The one okay. I have now, I can't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> if he sees a dog or a bear or a horse on television, he's ready to jump into the screen. <laughs> mm. You know, it's I- interesting. Uh, you know, I love this conversation. I'm, I'm thinking Finding My Yip would be... a a wonderful book. We we talk about the importance of books being mirrors, windows, and sliding glass doors uh, to help kids, you know, a- allow them to see themselves portrayed in the pages of the book to allow uh, kids to see others portrayed positively in books and then hopefully act as a way for kids to kind of come together and interact. I'm thinking that this is a wonderful book for a child who is – Dealing with some kind of speech impediment or stuttering uh, to see themselves in, in a way that that they may not have been able to see themselves before this. Right, and in the process of the book, what she, what the what Chloe has to learn is she has to learn to she has to develop more self confidence in herself, mm-hmm. and that's accomplished through having that bond with Boomer and also the interests they have, like Dog Obedience School, where there is a bully, Chihuahua, in the class. <laughs> but also the children in the book encounter bullies as well who tease them. Mm-hmm. So you have this uh, children a lot of times who have uh, impediments or disabilities often encounter other children who tease them. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's a teachable moment for the children who are teased to see, you know, I don't always have to uh, cower to that kind of uh, behavior that I'm receiving. Yeah. And I, I also think it, it's a, it, it could be a wonderful way for a family to sit down and start having a conversation with their kids who may not be dealing with any kind of uh, learning, learning challenge or, or speech challenge. And helping them develop some empathy, helping them understand that it's not cool to be making fun of of kids with a stutter or or any kind of challenge. It's uh, you know a, an opportunity for you to find ways to help that person be happy and succeed and to fit in. Exactly. In other words, you could be an encourager to that child. Mm-hmm. You could befriend that as a child yourself. You could befriend someone who has a problem. Uh, has a challenge and be and really support them to grow even mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, develop their self confidence. Tell me now, it's not something that I, that I've dealt with, but you've done some research. I know. I think for a lot of people, when they're talking with somebody, especially a kid who has a stammer or a stutter, 
and it's frustrating and you see that the person is really struggling to, to get a particular word out, I'm guessing that finishing that person's sentence isn't really helpful. Am I right about that? You're right. You yeah. just need to be patient and let them finish their thought yeah. because actually they know what they want to say. Mm-hmm. The problem is they don't, they can't articulate it. Mm-hmm. So by trying to help them by finishing their sentences, you are, I think you're discouraging them mm-hmm. because they may say, well, okay, why should I even say anything in the first place? Mm-hmm. Because if I can't get it out, someone's going to say it for me or try to say it for me. So, I think that it's not a good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This, and again, I know that you're not an, uh, an expert speech pathologist, but I'm, I'm curious. We're talking a little bit about the, what seems like a disconnect that somebody who has this, this real challenge in being able to articulate through speech can sing wonderfully without problems. Do you think that maybe um, a parent who is has a child that's that's dealing with the study stutter may in, encourage the child to to sing and just experience that ability to to be able to express themselves through song without trouble could that give them some confidence to maybe tackle the the, the speech a little bit harder I think anything is worth a try don't you I, I, I do I do but I'm off it have- gets me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot of children's songs are simple songs mm-hmm. uh, and simple melodies. Mm-hmm. And so teaching children singing along with them or teaching them or let and then sing, oh, sing that for me. I'd love to hear your voice. Your voice is so beautiful. Encouraging them to sing. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great way, yeah. a segue into uh, children with a disability like a stutter or a stammer. Yeah. Hey, while you're here, you've you shared with us that you've made a, a career as a singer and as, as a, a, a singing teacher. I'm not sure if that's the, the, the proper title. That's right. Talk, a, please, a little bit about the benefit. We talk a lot about the benefits of reading with our kids. I don't think we've ever talked about the benefits of singing with our kids. Are there benefits to singing together as a family? Well, look at the trap, the fine trap family. <laughs> <laughs> That was a singing family. (laughs) (laughs) So I think there are benefits, you know, to any kind of musical expression. Mm -hmm. I don't think that every kid or every child is drawn to singing as a profession for something Mm -hmm. to do with their lives. But I know of lots of children who who participate in little children's choirs. And at school, they sing songs at school. And I think it's wonderful if the family wants to get together and sing. Mm-hmm. There doesn't have to be an instrument and someone that plays the piano to accompany, accompany them. But they could just get together and sing rounds, you know, at camp. I don't know if you went to camp as a child, but I went to camp, mm-hmm. and we sang rounds all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Around the campfire. Yep, yeah. I didn't go to camp. I grew up in the inner city, but but we certainly had songs. They weren't very polite songs, but we but we had neighborhood <laughs> songs. But I, that was something I was going to mention. Uh, you know, music has become, you know, this this huge part of our lives. Pop music, and then there's music and uh, and video games and uh, commercials and and television shows and movies. Music surrounds us. But I don't think singing is as big a part of our lives as it was when I was a kid almost a hundred years ago. And it would be quite normal for your neighborhood to, when I was growing up, every neighborhood had their own little song. And then there was a song for the big city. And then there was an anthem for your school. And I'm not seeing that as much these days. Mm-hmm. I think we're too technologically uh advanced for mm-hmm. that right now, don't mm-hmm. you? I mean, technology has taken over in a way, and especially now in COVID where everybody's so distant. Mm-hmm. But before that, I do think the technology, people are less likely to get together, to be together. Even before COVID, we were we were doing Zooms and, you know, FaceTiming and things like that. So I, I don't know whether uh, that's, what has made the difference. Mm, yeah, interesting. Or just society in general. 
Mm-hmm. You know, neighbors don't are, are not always close to one another the way they used to be in a neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, did you always envision, envision yourself as a children's author? No, <laughs> I did not. This this whole idea came uh, about three summers ago when I was not teaching voice, not being an administrator uh, at my university position. And I just sat down and started writing this book. However, I will say that I had before that an interest in, interest in writing poetry. Mm-hmm. And as a child, I wrote short stories. I remember in the fifth grade, I, I wrote a story called The Mystery of the, the White Station Wagon. <laughs> <laughs> It had been stolen. Where where, where was it? <laughs> so uh, I've always been interested in the arts, mm-hmm. singing, dancing, uh, writing. Uh, but when I had real time in that summer, I just decided I wanted to write a book. Interesting. I needed to write a book. Mm-hmm. I felt called to write a book. Yeah. And I've already got several of the other books drafted. It was that impulse to be creative in a different way than singing and using my voice in a different way. Yeah. Well, this is really wonderful. I'm, uh, I love the fact that we can encourage our kids to use their voices through the pen, through song, through technology. But I, th- I think one of the things that I worry about is that kids... I, I I played with technology when I was a kid, and that was when cassette recorders, you know, b- being able to record your voice was first accessible to people. You didn't have to have thousands of dollars of, of equipment. And, um, you know, so we were doing some recordings. We were doing what basically was a podcast back then. But I, a lot of times kids these days... They're using technology, but not to create. They're using technology to consume. And I really want to encourage parents to encourage their kids to to use that technology, become familiar with it, but use it to create, to find their voice, to express their voice the way you've expressed yourself through books and through song. I think that's wonderful. That's what te- that's the advantage of technology, mm-hmm. right there. That we can create through technology. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of uh, you like in uh, MTSU has where I taught was Middle Tennessee State University. They have a big recording industry uh, uh, school there, mm-hmm. and so where you have a lot of students that are interested in doing that. They're interested in going into the uh, studio and also collaborating. Mm-hmm. I think more and more of that is great, too. That's creative in itself when you ha- do a co- collaborative project. Absolutely. Well, I know people are going to want to find out where they can fo- find out more about Finding My Yip and also be sure that they find out when the next uh, chapters of these books, of this book series comes out. So tell everybody where they can find you, please. All right, uh, you can look at my website, which is www.goodreadsbychristine.com. If you go to the website, you can, you can, uh, it's set up so that you can, uh, register, uh, to be on my newsletter, uh, and I will certainly be in contact with you, but you also can order the book. It's available through Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and Bookshop right now. Awesome. And most likely you can call up your local independent bookstore and ask them if they have Finding My Yip by Christine Isley Farmer. If they say no, you could always say, could you please order it for me? That would really be helpful. Absolutely. And it's in pre-order right now. It launches on March the 2nd. All right. We've had a great time speaking to the author of Finding My Yip. It's part of the Boomer's Tales series. And we've been speaking with the author, Christine Isley Farmer. Christine, thank you so much for being part of the show. Thank you. I've enjoyed it so much. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. It's our double header Saturday. In fact, we have three great guests coming to you. Michaela Wilson will be here to celebrate her brand new Live, Laugh, and Grow series. And then we'll be joined by author and illustrator Dory Hillstead Butler. She is the author 
And Kevin Atterbury is the illustrator of the Dear Beast series. It's a really, really fun interview you don't want to miss. If you are the author of a fantastic children's book, you may want to be a guest on the Reading With Your Kids podcast or on any podcast. Well, we are having, we're, we're hosting a How to Be an Amazing Podcast Guest webinar on April 27th. All you need to do is to go to our webpage, readingwithyourkids.com, click on the contact button, let us know that you want to attend, and we'll send you the invitation. It's totally free, and it's a great way to learn how you can get the word about your fantastic book out to hundreds and thousands of people. Right now, I want to thank the folks who make today's show so very wonderful. Of course, I want to start by thanking our guest, Christine Isley Farmer. Please be sure to check out Finding My Yip. I also want to thank my team, Alejandra Doherty, Fatima Khan, Alexia Brown, Hannah Pat Opoisky. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. I want to thank Augie the Doggy for keeping me company here in the studio. But most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking through in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.